All right, so today we have a very interesting problem that I probably have only seen this maybe a handful of times in my career. So let me show you what we have. So one, you can see that the prongs are worn out, but watch this, if we turn this ring around, let me get my hand out of the way here. The prong right here is completely missing. And if you'll look at this flat spot, what happens is this lady has worn a band up beside this and through the years, it's finally sawn through and uh, knocked that prong off. So what are we gonna do about it? All right, the first thing we're gonna do is measure this diamond and it is about 5.9 millimeters. All right, so now let's go to our handy little findings catalog and findings are basically the parts that we order for jewelry but look right here see that little peg on the bottom that's a different style of setting if you're setting it into a band ours is this one it doesn't have the peg so i ordered this ring right here or this head excuse me and i ordered it for uh let me find my setting it was the one carat which was uh, basically it's a six millimeter and this stone is a 5.9. So I ordered that part and it looks like this right here. Anyone get a shot of that? Okay, let me explain how diamonds are weighed because everybody thinks of diamonds in the sense of a carrot. Not every diamond is a carrot. So what is a carrot? So a carat is equals 100 points, and a point is nothing more than a unit of weight. So 100 points equals one carat. You can compare it to a dollar because a dollar is 100 pennies. So a carat is 100 points, a dollar is 100 pennies, Half a carat's 50 points, half a dollar's 50 cents. You got a quarter, it's 25 pennies. You got a quarter of a carat, it's 25 points. So now let's weigh this diamond. All right, so what we're going to attempt to do is heat this up and take this old part out of here. And let's just hope it lets go and comes out easily. Come on. Look at that. Let me just clean these edges up a little. All right, let's just kind of clean these up and true them up a little bit. So now you can see it comes to a point on both sides and the points are not quite even because the ring has a lot more wear on this side than it does this side because that's where she wore the band. But now I'm just gonna take this head and I'm gonna kind of stick it in there and you can see how it's supposed to go, but how am I gonna hold it in there? All right, what I'm gonna do here, and no, I'm not gonna laser weld this head in, I'm just gonna tack it, just enough to hold it, and then I'm gonna look at it and see if it's straight. In the category of that never happens, I actually got it straight the first time, so now I'm gonna go in here, and I'm just gonna hit it once, maybe twice more, and the reason I don't want permanently is if you ever have to take it out, you don't want it laser welded in because then you have to cut it out and grind it and it's a mess. So all I'm doing with the laser welder is just barely holding it in place so it doesn't move when I solder it because I like the solder joint way better than a laser joint. And I want you to notice, see how I left a lot of this head sticking down? It's because I just didn't like the height of this head. It's taller than what was on there. And it's not going to affect any of the structural integrity if I grind that off. So now we're just gonna solder this in place and know that nothing is gonna slip because we went ahead and pre-lasered it. And like I said, I didn't laser weld it. I laser tacked it, tacked, tacked it. How do you say that? It's hard to say if you think about it, but all that's doing is keeping this head from moving while I do this right here. All right, look at that solder flow, nice and pretty. Now we got a really good bond. 
Okay, now you can see it's soldered right here and here, but I want you to pay attention to something. Is the head sitting straight or is it cocked one side or the other? I think it's straight. Next, let's turn it to the side and look at it in this angle, and it can either be tilted one to the other, but like I said, first time for everything, I got it straight, but lastly, look straight down on it. And you want these two prongs, this one and the one below it, to be at the 12 o'clock and six o'clock, and I think they are. So now what we're gonna do is just basically come in here and kind of clean and polish everything while I can get to it. All right, so if you look right here, here's five millimeters. This is the line we're working off, this long one down here on the bottom. And here's five and here's six, and you can see it's just below it. So I'm gonna go in here and I think this one is 5.9, it is. So what I'm gonna do is go back maybe three burrs and grab one, and I'll show you why. All right, this burr is barely gonna cut anything, which is what I want. I'm just kind of starting the process. I'm not trying to finish it. So now I'm gonna go to my next size up. So now this one, You know what? I don't like this burr. I'm going to get a different one. All right. And you know what? I don't like this one either. If you look at it real close, you can see how closely these teeth are spaced together. That's what's called a low speed burr, and it's just going to take forever to cut it. So let me switch to a high speed. All right. See the difference in the teeth structure? See how the one here is very fine and the one above it's a little more aggressive that I just like that cut better. So here should be my final. And I'm just gonna slowly ease into here and see if we can get a good cut. All right, now watch this. I can tell I'm straight because I can see the top of my ring is just perfectly balanced up there. So I'm pretty happy with that. All right. Now, whenever you cut, you leave these little flashings. So I'm going to go in here and take them off with a Kratex wheel and then just repolish it. All right. So we encountered our first problem and the diamond doesn't fit. So the next size burr that I have is way too big. So what I'm gonna do is put this burr in there and push it to this prong, push it, pull it to this prong, rotate the mounting and do that three times. So we're gonna go just a little bit. It just barely doesn't fit. All right, that got it. You can see that the diamond is sitting in the seat and see this where the prong is taller than the diamond? That is what's gonna hold it. So what I'm gonna do is come in here with a specialty pair of pliers and watch this. See how I bent it over? Let me spin it. like that. Now I'll do that to all the prongs. Notice that I haven't driven the prong home. And the reason is I can get my file in here while I've still got access to the entire prong before I drive it against that diamond. And let me just round these out. All right, now here's a pro tip for the other jewelers out here. What I did was I just kind of rounded off the square prong. Now, what I'd like to do is take my smooth side of my file, set it against the diamond, and just roll it over that prong. It just gives you a nice round contour when it polishes up. So let me do that. See how I'm just going to roll it over the top. Okay. All right. So what I'm noticing here 
it looks like this side of the diamond is a little lower. It's, instead of sitting straight, it kind of looks like it's sitting at an angle. It could just be the cut, but I'm going to compensate for that while I can. So I'm just going to come in here and pull this prong back just a little bit to take pressure off of it. Then I'm going to go to the other side, and when I tighten it down, maybe you'll see that diamond move just a little. It did. Perfect. Now I'm just going to go in here and drive all of these prongs home. Remember that little bit left over there that I wanted to I wanted to push it further into the mounting mainly so it doesn't stick up so high. So now what I'm going to do is just come in here Like I say, don't worry about all the gold that's getting thrown on the floor. The cleaning crew will sweep it up and throw it away. So now, we're just going to do a little hand polishing. Then we're going to take it back to the big polisher and do the final polish. And then I'll show you the final result.